animal shelters all over the country are seeing an increase in the numbers of pets being surrendered. Some of the causes behind that influx of animals. Also, health experts urging parents to get their children up to date on their vaccinations as the school year rapidly approaches. And later, a new video game looking to do a lot more than just entertain. How oh, it's trying to help rural communities dealing with health care shortages. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. There are dozens of animals in new homes tonight, maybe even yours, thanks to people who came to the Dane County Humane Society this month. Empty the shelters came at an important time, one that some who care for pets consider a national crisis. Right now, many shelters are dealing with overpopulation. These issues here behind me are some of the main reasons why. And Caitlin Davis explains what shelters everywhere need more of right now. A much emptier Dane County Humane Society these days shouldn't fool you. They're definitely needing help. At a lot of shelters, including us, we're, we're struggling with staff, staffing. So if you're looking for a job, we have some part-time and full-time positions open. This month, the shelter helped nearly 90 animals find new homes, thanks to joining in the Empty the Shelters push. But much like shelters nationwide, they're seeing overpopulation become an issue. The other thing is that we're seeing is a shortage of veterinarians. The nonprofit Best Friends Animal Society found there were about 100,000 more dogs and cats in shelters earlier this year than 2021. With more animals, fewer workers, and fewer vets, it's reaching crisis levels. There is a big shortage about 20. We won't get caught up for about 20 years. In one year, dogs and cats can each have eight puppies and kittens respectively. Couple that with the current struggles of inflation and lingering effects of COVID, the Humane Society says they're seeing more people surrender pets due to cost or having to move. There are a lot of different places that have restrictions on size and breed, so then they're, they're finding it difficult to be able to keep their pet. This month's Empty the Shelter events have helped. Dane County had more than 100 animals in its care beforehand. Still, they're hopeful people step up in one way or another either to adopt, apply, or volunteer. You try to be a network for each other to help each other out so you, you can do as much as you can for the animals and the people. In Madison, Caitlin Davis, News 3 Now. If you find a lost pet, DCHS recommends you hold the pet for 48 hours. Often the pet is still in its own neighborhood. This can save space for an animal who's in desperate need of shelter space. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast now. Here is Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Uh, it's a nice evening to be out on the patio. Skies are generally clear and the temperatures are comfortable. Let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud track. Just those fair weather cumulus clouds popping up this afternoon. A few more clouds will come in overnight, but not a drop of rain anywhere around southern Wisconsin. High temperatures today, upper 70s to the lower 80s. Madison, Janesville have reached the 81 degree mark. Uh, La Crosse, a little warmer at 83. Current temperatures are mainly in the upper 70s now. Uh, 80 degrees right now in Boscobel, 76 in Juneau. But as we zoom into Dane County, everybody's in the upper 70s, although Edgerton right now still at 80 degrees. Otherwise, look for skies to be partly cloudy this evening. Temperatures will drop off to about 68 by late evening. Not looking for any rain tonight tomorrow or probably Wednesday as well, but we are looking for the possibility for some rain after that. I'll tell you when it'll arrive in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. Police are investigating after a man was shot on Madison's west side. Officers were sent to the 2200 block of Allied Drive about 915 last night. They found a 36 year old man with a gunshot wound. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say the victim and suspect allegedly knew each other. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Lake Delton police say no one was injured yesterday when someone fired a gun outside of Walmart. Officers were first called to the store at 130 Commerce Street, about 450 p.m. Authorities say they also got a report that a juvenile and a dog were missing, but when officers arrived, they found both the juvenile and dog were not missing or in any danger. Police determined a gun had been fired, but no one was hit or hurt. Everyone involved has been identified, but police did not say if anyone was facing any tentative charges related to that incident. Madison police say they arrested a man last night after he allegedly walked away from a crash near Monona Bay. Authorities allege the man was driving drunk at the time. It happened in the intersection of West Wash and South Park Street about 8.30 when police got to the scene. Witnesses told them a man who was involved had walked away from the scene. Police eventually found him. He denied being part of the crash, but they say keys found in his pocket belonged to one of those vehicles involved. 
Police arrested the man on a tentative charge of seventh offense. OWI incited him for hit and run and not having a valid driver's license. No one was hurt in that crash. State Patrol will be out monitoring traffic on I-90-94 throughout the day in Sauk County. Pilots keeping an eye out for vehicles speeding and or driving aggressively. If a traffic violation is spotted, the pilot will alert a state trooper on the ground to administer a traffic stop. Additional aerial enforcement is planned for I-94 in Jackson County if the weather permits. College students heading back to campus over the next few weeks have not one but two viruses to consider. After more than two years, UW campus leaders feel good on handling COVID-19, but now with monkeypox thrown into the mix, they're taking a few more precautions. When it comes to COVID, UW's protocol similar to last spring. Students are encouraged to take a COVID test before moving into residence halls and before the first day of class. High efficiency masks and at-home tests are offered free to students each week. There is a limited number of quarantine spaces for students living on campus. As for masks, they are not required, but encouraged when in large groups. For monkeypox, the school feels the risk of contracting it on campus remains low, but Students who think they've been exposed should meet with University Health Services. All students need to do is visit the My UHS Patient Portal, select Make an Appointment, and then follow the specific prompts for the monkeypox virus. And as students prepare for school, health experts are urging parents to get routine vaccinations for them. The CDC data released in April, researchers compared state and local immunization programs across the U.S. In the 2020-2021 school year, they found vaccination coverage decreased by about 1% for all vaccines when compared to the school year before. Dr. Julie Morita, a pediatrician and member of the CDC Advisory Committee, says in order to keep vaccine-preventable diseases at bay, we have to keep the level of routine vaccinations high. If you think back over time, there were diseases like measles, mumps, chickenpox, whooping cough were fairly common. And we no longer see these diseases that often, and that's because of our immunization program. CDC researchers say enforcing vaccination policies and following up with under-vaccinated students are key to improving vaccination rates. Pfizer and BioNTech have taken the first step to get emergency use authorization for their updated COVID-19 vaccine that targets Omicron variants. The companies say they've submitted their application to the FDA. Their bivalent vaccine would help protect against the BA4 and BA5 variants in people age 12 and up. The companies say the shot could be ready to start shipping in September, pending authorization. Next at 6, it is a video game you'll actually want your kids to play, and it's coming to a classroom nearby soon. But this game could have much deeper consequences than simply having fun, helping in part to fix a growing health care problem in Wisconsin. Tahlil Mohadeen got a first-hand look at it from developers today. Tahlil? Eric, that's right. Earlier today, I got a look at this game, and, let's, and it lets players role-play real-life health care scenarios from answering 911 calls, driving an ambulance, and even administering admi emergency aid. It's an effort by health care workers, gamers, and teachers, all pulling their expertise to take a new approach to recruitment. Welcome to Ruralton, Wisconsin. Population 300. Everybody that exists needs to care about this. It's a fictional town in a video game called Rural Roads to Health Careers. So with this game, the whole idea is can we create awareness? Can we see how much interest is out there? The interest they're hoping to cultivate is with high schoolers across the state. They can't fix this problem yet, but to developers, this is about the long game. In many positions, it's a long ramp. You know, to become a physician is many, you know, it's a decade. So we can't wait until we are, you know, wringing our hands and saying, oh no, we don't have enough physicians. So far, players can try their hand at 35 real-life scenarios, from doctors to paramedics to administration, without the commitment or risk. So then we're going to pile into the ambulance, which is over here, and drive over. Thank goodness you're here. My son Chris has had a bad asthma attack. And if they fail, no one really dies. They get to try again. But then through that process, they get to say, okay, if I didn't bring the right people on my team this time, who should I have brought? The game focuses on health care in rural communities, which even pre-pandemic had a hard time recruiting and retaining staff. Not everybody wants to live and work there, but there are great things happening in rural Wisconsin health care. A notion these characters are going to great lengths to show. Developers hoping to start paving a road towards a long-term fix. This is a complex problem. It's one avenue to really generate interest. That's pretty exciting, you know? 
The game will eventually be available to all Wisconsin schools for free, but the initial rollout will focus on rural high schools with area health education centers, the first of which will be in October in the village of Amherst. Well, pretty interesting stuff. Talil, thank you. And still ahead on News 3 Now at 6, an update on the effort to clean up the Ahara Chain of Lakes system, plus Alliant Energy celebrating the completion of a new solar project in southwestern Wisconsin. How many homes are expected to get power from the site? That's just ahead. Before treating your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, you're not the only one with questions about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start, with about 10 minutes of treatment once every three months. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you, and if a sample is available. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. Plus, right now, you may pay $0 for Botox. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. Made in America is more than just a slogan. It's smart policy. When we manufacture things here, our shelves are stocked, and it creates jobs you can raise a family on, like my parents had. My mom was a teacher, and my dad worked third shift. I'm tired of the excuses from millionaires running the Senate. I'll bring manufacturing back here so folks like you who actually earn your paychecks finally get a fair shot. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. Okay, and you got so upset at me. Oh, my God. Oh, look. No way. She has definitely got some work done. Doesn't even look the same anymore. Talk about an extreme makeover. I wonder how much money she spent on those upgrades. Hi! The house looks great, right? Three years, no interest on roofing and siding from Feltco. Right now, get three years, no interest on Feltco roofing and siding. Three years, no interest on Feltco roofing and siding and soon. Call now. Call 866 for Feltco. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Align Energy is planning on bringing solar energy to more homes as it hosted a ribbon-cutting event in Richland County today to celebrate the completion of construction at its Beer, uh, Bear Creek solar site. It's named after the nearby trout stream there that flows from the Wisconsin River. The Bear Creek solar project will so generate 50 megawatts or enough electricity to power approximately 13,000 homes when it's at peak capacity. This project is meant to serve all of our customers. In fact, the 50 megawatts, to give people a, an idea of the scale of that project, it'll serve about 13,000 average homes in the area. Now, there are 122,000 solar panels at the site, and tests are still being done right now. The solar project is expected to be fully operational this fall. A popular initiative looking to clean up the waterways in Dane County is giving an update on its next phase. Suck the Muck was first introduced by County Exec Joe Parisi back in 2017. The project analyzes and removes potential sediment or muck in streams that contain phosphorus, which can increase the frequency and extent of hazardous algae blooms. For its next phase, the project will work in the Six Mile Creek. It's estimated that approximately 25,000 tons of material will be removed, including an estimated 60,000 pounds of phosphorus. A pound of phosphorus can equal up to 500 pounds of algae. This is from one pound of it um, um, dissolved in the water. And since the initiative first started, 31,000 tons of sediment containing over 100,000 pounds of phosphorus have been removed. Still ahead on News Street Now at 6, mullet madness in Wisconsin. Plus, what is the right age for your child to have their own phone? The new tool introduced that can help parents decide when their child is ready. And a great start to the week, but could we see some rain down the road? Gary's back with your complete forecast after the break. With the best service, quality, and prices, Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. To help you remember, I made this cheer. V value, A awesome value, L lots of value, U. For a limited time, get free kids' glasses and eye exam only at Stanton Optical. Walk-ins welcome.
Fjords has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjords furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Right now at the Century House, purchase any Fjords furniture and receive up to 20% off. All models, all sizes, all colors. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjords furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com. Honda, every summer adventure is the destination. Take your adventures farther with Honda, America's most fuel-efficient full-line automaker. Hurry in to a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. Before treating your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, you're not the only one with questions about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start, with about 10 minutes of treatment once every three months. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you, and if a sample is available. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. Plus, right now, you may pay $0 for Botox. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $400 at Lens Crafters, over $200 at Walmart, and over $150 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. Watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. In the digital age, many parents are struggling with when their child is ready for that first cell phone and how much time they should even spend on screens at all. Now the American Academy of Pediatrics and AT&T are launching tools to help families decide if kids are ready for a phone and help create safe, responsible media and technology use. This questionnaire asks, does your child keep track of their things and whether you trust their judgment when you aren't there to gauge if the family is ready? Parents can also build a customized media plan for the entire family. What boundaries do you want to set around technology so kids can have healthy sleep, they can have undistracted homework time, whatever is important to your family, controlling tech and enjoying it, not feeling controlled by it. Media use among tweens and teens has skyrocketed since the pandemic. According to Common Sense Media, teens spend over eight and a half hours a day on screens. A Wausau teen is being recognized for his business in the front party in the back. Our hairstyle, Caden Kershaw, won a nationwide contest held by USA Mullet Championships. Check it out. The Wausau West senior says he's been growing his golden locks now for about three years. He was thrilled to find out he won and says his mullet is definitely an attention grabber. It's kind of funny getting all the attention because when I first started growing the mullet, I never like imagined this stuff. You know, like I said, it was just a joke at the time. In addition to a big trophy, Kershaw also won $1,000. So what will he do with that money? He's donating it to Peyton's Promise, a Wausau nonprofit that provides food to local pantries. And Caden wasn't the only Wisconsinite that won a mullet championship. That's Emmett Bailey from Menominee who took home first place in the kids division. Emmett, who is also known as Mullet Boy, was able to take first place on the last day of voting. Another Wisconsin boy, Axel Wenzel from Brilliant, came in fourth place, making them the only two boys to finish in the top five from the same state. And coming up on News 3 Now at 10, we catch up with Emmett and find out his secrets to growing a championship-worthy mullet and what he did with his prize money. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti, I think you should grow a mullet, Gary. What do you think? I was going to say, that, you know, that, that brings back, remember uh, when COVID started and all the hairdressers shut yeah. down, you know, the, our COVID hairstyles? That's probably where it started for those That's guys. Probably, yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> well, tonight, uh, skies are mainly clear, at least uh, for the time being in Madison. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam showing clear skies and no rain across the skies. Just a couple of light showers up in Lake Superior, and that's about it for the upper Midwest. Three things you need to know in the forecast. We'll see some patchy fog again tonight and possibly tomorrow night as well. 
shouldn't be too widespread, shouldn't be too dense, so not a big problem there. Dry weather for tomorrow and also for Wednesday as well with high temperatures in the lower 80s both days. Then we'll see some scattered shower and thunderstorm chances from Wednesday night into Thursday. Right now it doesn't look like it's going to amount to too much. As we check out high temperatures over the next 10 days, high, the average high temperature should be in the upper 70s, will be in the low 80s next couple of days, drop back into the upper 70s for Thursday and Friday, back to the low 80s for next week and also a little more humid too and that could lead to some thunderstorm chances there. And then temperatures will show a little more significant cooling, highs in the low to mid 70s toward the middle and latter parts of next week. As we check out weather track, you can see right now high pressure is located just out to our west. The winds are pretty light. Uh, there's a cold front up to the north. That's what's generating the showers up toward Lake Superior, but the heat is out to the west. That's where temperatures are in the 90s. This part of the Midwest, very comfortable. Upper 70s to around 80 degrees. Dew point temperatures, they're also down, mainly in the 50s, so pretty comfortable. The more humid air, a little farther to the south, a little farther to the west, but even there, it's not terribly humid. And as we check out future track, you can see just a few clouds tonight. Again, some maybe some patchy fog forming, and then tomorrow, lots of sunshine during the day. Winds start to become a little more southerly with time, although not very strong. And then as we head into Wednesday, we'll see more sunshine, high temperatures topping out again in the lower 80s. Next chance of rain will be with these showers and thunderstorms, more likely Wednesday night into Thursday. Otherwise, for tonight, look for skies to be partly cloudy across most of uh, Dane County. Look for a low temperature of 59 Wanakee, 58 here in Madison and to the east. Look for a low of about 59 in Deerfield. Clear skies there. Uh, for the rest of southern Wisconsin, Milwaukee will be a little bit warmer, closer to Lake Michigan with a low of about 65, but elsewhere, 58 Lone Rock, 62 degrees in Monroe. And then for tomorrow, we're back to partly sunny skies and another nice day. High temperature at 81. Winds will be pretty light too, making it feel pretty nice. Otherwise, 7 to 10 day forecast. Shower and thunderstorm chances Wednesday night into Thursday. Not looking for a lot of rain there. Then Friday, Saturday looking dry. Sunday and Monday, as humidity levels come up, a little better chances for showers and thunderstorms. Probably the best bet on Monday. And then those temperatures drop off as we dry out and cool off with highs in the lower 70s by the middle of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Everybody's ready for football season, right? Well, if you're planning to tailgate, you better plan to pay up. No surprise, according to a new report, the prices of a number of tailgating essentials have gone up because of inflation. These include things like gas, airfare, and groceries. But if you're grilling propane and firewood, they're up about 22%. To save money, they say opt for hot dogs or pork ribs, which aren't up as much as chicken or ground beef, and fresh fruits and veggies are a better bet compared to packaged snacks. Of course, you can always just sit back, relax at home. TV prices are actually down, Zach. It's almost time. As fall camp winds down, game week is approaching, where the Badgers say it's time to kick off their season. That's next in sports on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. How do you use your energy? Hitting the ball farther than yesterday? Fielding whatever comes your way? Trying to shine as bright as the sun? At Alliant Energy, we bring more clean, renewable energy to our customers every single day to power what matters to you. Because even during the most powerful moments in our lives, we're not thinking about power. We're thinking about each other. Alliant Energy. Powering beyond. Felco Factory Direct. What does that mean? It means no middleman, no overpriced, underperforming windows. Factory Direct means getting what you want, when you want, without breaking the bank. It means when you buy one window, you'll get one free. Yes, free. It means quality craftsmanship, custom designs, and a lifetime warranty. Most importantly, it means a team of window professionals dedicated to one thing above all, your delight. Buy one window, get one free. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Real flavors, real meals, real good. All of Knorr's high-quality pasta and rice sides are now made with no artificial flavors or preservatives. Knorr, taste for good. At Bachman Pools and Spas, we have 25 hot tubs on display. Several models available for immediate delivery. For a limited time, all new hot spring spas come with a revolutionary freshwater salt system for free. That's a $1,200 value. You owe it to yourself to experience soft, natural, healthy water. Hurry in to take advantage of special 0% interest for 60 months. Plus, get a free freshwater salt system. Relax. It's Bachman's. 
We're here at the local farmer's market where Informed Choice Insurance Agency is offering fresh, hand-picked local Medicare. What do you mean when you say shop local for Medicare? A lot of Medicare health plans have benefits that are specific to your county. So why would you call a national 1-800 number when your local Medicare plans have all the bells and whistles the national TV ads promise, only better? Don't be fooled by national TV hype. When it comes to your Medicare options, keep it local with Informed Choice Insurance Agency and their services are free. Tuesday morning, we're talking about cardio for a cause. How a local personal trainer is raising awareness for a disease in honor of his sister. Plus, we're gearing up for this next chance to rain and when it impacts you in southern Wisconsin. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. With fall camp just about over, that means one thing for Wisconsin football. It's almost game week. The countdown for EW season opener against Illinois State is at 12 days. And in 12 days, the Badgers can finally show off all the work they've been putting in. From spring ball to summer conditioning and now to fall camp, it's time for Badger football. Well, the days are long, but the weeks are short, man. So it's like... You know, you'll get into the day and it'll feel like a grind and you're going over stuff, but then, you know, next thing you know, it's next week. Um, but as a group, I feel like we're starting to get things together. We've been working for so long, you know, uh, starting to see a lot of things come together for both sides of the ball. Um, you know, guys are looking good and guys are really starting to uh, fit into their roles. The preseason hype train keeps on chugging along for Braylon Allen and Nick Herbig. Today, the Badger duo were named preseason second-team All-Americans by the AP. Allen's coming off the year where he rushed for over 100 yards in eight of the 11 games he played in, while Herbig was Wisconsin's sack leader, tallying nine. After finishing in the bottom half of the Big Ten last season, it's almost time for Tony Granato's squad to hit the ice to right that wrong. Wisconsin unveiled its conference schedule for the upcoming season, and for the first time since 2009, UW is opening up with a conference foe. They'll head to Columbus on October 7th for a series at Ohio State. After a pair of non-conference weekends, the Badgers will welcome Penn State to the Kohl Center. And of course, the border battle renews December 9th in Minnesota. Now the two teams will play in Madison on February 10th. Staying on the ice, the Madison Capitals have rounded out their coaching staff, bringing in Tom Gilbert as their director of player development and assistant coach. You may remember Gilbert. He was part of Wisconsin's national championship team in 2006, scoring the game-winning goal against Boston College. And speaking of schedule releases, Wisconsin Wrestling announced their non-conference schedule for the upcoming season. On November 5th, they'll head to Jacksonville for the first ever Battle in the River City, then to Cornell on November 19th. The first time to see the Badgers at the Fieldhouse will be December 11th when they host Drexel, and the final non-conference duel of the season for them is set for February 18th when Northern Iowa comes to town. They're all back in school soon. That here means sports is coming. Your busy time. No vacation. It's already here, Zach. Final check with Gary. Well, my vacation time should be coming because the weather's pretty you're, quiet you're out not there. not allowed anywhere. <laughs> oh, okay, well, there's sunshine. Uh, the sky's clearing out very nicely east of Madison uh, around Platteville. Partly sunny skies there from our Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. Current temperatures, very comfortable. Mid to upper 70s. Boscobel still at 80 degrees here in uh, Dane County. 78 right now now in Oregon, 78 in Wanakee, and 77 degrees in Middleton. Look for temperatures to drop to the upper 60s by late evening. Maybe a little patchy fog overnight. I'm more on that at 10. Gary, thank you, and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight at 10.